Good morning everyone. For the past five years plus I've been using Sony and it's been quite an adventure and today I kind of wanted to have a sit down discussion with you following a discussion I had with Manny where we talk about the pros and cons of using Sony. Manny made a similar video and it really triggered a lot of thoughts about my usage as a travel photographer as someone who's a lot on the fields in multiple difficult circumstances and who is also taking both photos and videos and I wanted to give you an overview of the pros and the cons, what I found that was great, what I found that was not great, what can be improved, what would be a deal breaker almost for getting Sony and I want it to be a discussion so please let me know in the comments what you're using, how you're using it and if you agree with me or not on what I'm saying or if you've had the same experience I'm absolutely dying to hear from you guys it's gonna be super important let's take a deep breath and let's get started Let's start at the beginning. My name is Pierre T. Lambert. I'm a travel adventure photographer and the creator of the 30 day adventure to great photos, a step-by-step -step method for taking your photography to the next level, no matter what kind of gear you're using. It has helped thousands of students around the world. Some of them said it changed their understanding of photography and some became pro. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to learn more about that. Sony was never on my radar because they had terrible battery life when there was the a7 II. And I was like, nah, I'm ne never gonna switch to Sony because I used to shoot Canon 5D Mark II when I started to get seriously into photography. Then I switched to a Nikon D750 before buying expensive lenses for doing weddings and portraits as a professional. Then when I started doing some video, I acquired a Panasonic GH5. The autofocus was absolutely horrendous, but it was an interesting camera that was small and compact. The problem is I had two systems with me all the time. So when the A7R 3 came out, I was like, this can do both photo and video great. I'm getting one. So I got one around Christmas 2017 and I dove in for Sony. And for the past five years, I bought my gear and I've been evolving from that A7 III to a R3 to a A7S III to a A1. I still have those two. And I also tried the A7 IV, the A7R5. I've tried most of their most recent models thanks to this YouTube channel. I've shared actually my experience with you. And there's a lot of great things about using Sony and there's a lot of terrible things. So the pros for me, let's start with the good part. Sony has a crazy autofocus and that struck me from the beginning. That a7 III changed my life for the video, for the photography. It literally changed the how I was shooting. I was able to shoot better, faster, have a consistent autofocus that would lock on my face and not let me go. Unlike my Panasonic from before the GH5 and unlike my Nikon D750, which was never made for video, clearly. And when Sony said they were doing both photo and video great, I was like, nah, I don't know. But when I started using it, I was always impressed. Look, you're able nowadays with those modern cameras in 2023 and beyond, you are able to do 4K, 422, 10 bits in camera while shooting high megapixel photos with one of the best autofocus on the market. And that is just mind blowing to be able to go from that awesome video mode to that awesome photo mode all in one camera body without having to change, which means you keeping the same lenses, right? You don't have to buy new lenses. You don't have to uh, get anything different because you will have it all inside your backpack and you can just like flip a button and go from photo to video. And I always loved that about Sony. And this is one of the biggest reasons I went and stayed in that ecosystem. Now there's been downsides. We'll, we'll talk about them like I mentioned, but this was great. And image quality has always been on top, whether it was my a7 III, which was crazy good low light, and all the photos that you see have been edited through presets that I created in Lightroom over the years. They are also available for you if you want to save time when you're editing and you want to try a new style, uh, you can get them. But those presets have been applied to all those different camera models, even different brands. And what I found is that the image quality was consistent across those images. I would have seen it very quickly if something that I created for a previous generation completely changed for the new generation. But no, there was some consistency in the image quality, which really I appreciate it. And my experience with Sony has always been that they have been leading in terms of low light capabilities for cameras. I mean, this A7S III, I was like literally filming the Milky Way, which was mind boggling at the time when it came out. You know, it's a completely groundbreaking knowing that you can shoot that ISO 32,000 is 
Awesome, you know, it allows you to shoot differently and maybe not have to buy that super expensive glass that shoots at 1.4. Maybe you can keep the one that you have f4, f2.8. And that is always a good point. Speaking of glass, wow. Okay, Sony really nailed one thing. It is their glass. What do I mean by that? They have a great range of lenses available. Like it's what, over 66 lenses or something for, for this system, but they also open it up to third party lenses and that changed everything. So you can get an awesome camera body and then get those third party lenses or even like putting some fun lenses on it, you know, with adapters and stuff that allows you to play a little bit. Now, I will say I love my buttons on the Sony lenses. It's something that I've always appreciated because the autofocus on Sony is amazing and it's been ever since i got an a7r3 i've never felt limited by the auto focus this little button changes everything because you can be like let's say in spot focus mode where you like super precise in where you're shooting uh, with my back button focus but suddenly i'm gonna press on that button and it's gonna detect an eye anywhere in the frame or his face and focus right on that and it's like an instant switch that allowed me to take so many photos so much faster over the years and I even did that on the water also when I was trying to take photos of people where you can't really see the face I was just like grabbing that button it's like hard to see so there's been so many instances where I really appreciated how this was built and to me that's a great selling point also considering that this autofocus capabilities is across all their models whether it's a zve1 or a7 r4 or a1 you have one of the best autofocus on the market and who wouldn't want that now i will say look at this this battery is one of the reason why sony is awesome sometimes not always but sometimes they haven't changed their battery since the a7 III, which means that since 2017 you have the same batteries that's like six years of consistency in batteries that you don't have to change you don't have to throw them away you're limiting the waste the e-waste that you're creating i mean maybe not if you're buying new cameras but the batteries you can reuse them i'm still using my a7 r3 batteries as backups it is something that i appreciate and when you're with other people on the field and you're like oh dude, no I, I lost battery i don't have it a friend can give it to you or you can just plug in your USB-C right there. And that was since A7R3. Guys, it's been five years. So anyone who's like, you can do that now. Yeah, I know, but we've been able to do that for five years. That allows you to charge even while you're shooting. And I've, I've had instances where I had the cable run from my backpack to the camera. And no matter what kind of USB-C cable you're using, because I don't know, there's a lot of quirks with USB-C cables. Uh, the Canon ones would not take all my USB-C cables. They had to be specific ones sometimes. So this takes everything everywhere all at once, pun intended. One thing I haven't man mentioned yet is the size. So I love that they try to keep the lenses very compact and over the years they've made them smaller and smaller. If you compare uh, the 7200 V1 versus V2 and the weight, there is a huge drastic difference. I have full video talking about that and the changes but this is something i appreciate like the the body always felt good in hand i never had problems so much with the grip and and how it felt i will say i do have a little preference nowadays for a canon grip but that's gonna be mm, very personal some people hate it i actually like it i'll talk about something that's really controversial with the camera bodies in the second part but uh, for now size weight handling has been great it definitely increased a little bit we can feel the camera in hand i can hold it nicely i never felt like i needed camera straps uh, which happens for example with like as where i'm like i feel like i'm gonna lose my camera every two seconds but with this it stays in hand and that's awesome having compact and small form and one camera system one type of battery allows me to travel with less stuff which is important i don't want to break my back with like giant lenses and gear honestly awesome to be able to travel the world with easy simple system when you're traveling i don't know if i should mention it but share your experience with me if you have a sony this has been extremely weather resistant those cameras have been well built my a1 my sms3 have been through hell even though it's an r5 i was there thing i was shooting like for hours in the rain in tokyo i've shot in the water in the more cases i got splashed on i had to rinse it with water also once it never failed me it was really good all the time i would try to wipe it as soon as possible the one thing i will tell you you need to put a little thing on top of your camera because it will allow the contacts that are in that hot shoe mount not to get connected together and not to give you an error on the camera it's not a big deal but it's going to say the accessory is not 
not support it when there's nothing. It's just water or humidity that is stuck in there. Just put something if you know you're going to be in an environment where there's going to be a lot of water dripping on your camera. It doesn't mean it's weather waterproof and you can like go crazy with it. I would still be cautious, but over the years, I've let myself be a little more careless because those bodies could handle anything. So that's a pretty good point. So these are my pros. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the cons. What is debilitating? What have I found frustrating over the years? But before that, if you hear every single photo that you've seen has been edited with my presets. I use them as a base on all my photos and they've been helping me for years. They're versatile, non-destructive. You can get them, check them out with the link in the description. Get them for yourself and edit differently. Maybe your photos, try a new style or just save time when you're editing. And before I forget, there is something I share twice a month, which is an awesome top five newsletter with my top inspiration, exclusive photos and things I've discovered that I love. And I invite you to join. It's completely free and you'll receive the next edition of it. And hopefully it will inspire in your life and in your next shoot. So just go to ptl.fm forward slash top five or hit the link in the description for that. Okay, or cons. Let's start with the biggest one because oh, it is so frustrating. Let's start with the firmware updates. Where are the firmware updates? This is something that I've been struggling with over the years is that I would invest in the A1, which is like close to 7K when it came out. Then a year later or less, there was a Sony A7 IV that had functionalities that could be built in this A1. We're talking about focus breathing compensations, menus, a bunch of things like that. And Sony will benefit from us having more updated cameras because we'll have more trust in the longevity of the system also. The menus keep changing almost on every iteration, which is cool. I'm super excited to see those changes, but I want to be able to have that in every single camera. Why? Because it's consistent. When I'm gonna grab a ZV-E1 and then I go back to my A1, I don't wanna be lost every time I'm looking at the menu and be like, oh man, where was that thing, you know? this is not cool. So Sony really is a firmware update. Let us all have a menu system that is consistent across all cameras. It would be awesome in my opinion. If you want that too, please write it in the comments. Sony, please give us firmware updates. Hopefully it will happen. Another thing that can be fixed with a simple firmware update is a name convention for photos. It's so frustrating because after 9,999 photos, it resets to zero, I mean to one, which means that let's say you're taking more than 10,000 photos on the same shoot or over a few days and you put them in the same folder, they're gonna auto erase each other. And it has happened to me once ever since I'm so careful, but it's a real frustration. And it used to be the same with the videos before, but somehow they fixed the video part, but not the photo part. So for the video, now you can put a different date in front of your photo. So you can have a, a sequence, but with a date in front of when you shot it, which is awesome. Now we want the same photo photo or simply allow us to go to 99,999 instead of 9,000. That way you reset at 100,000 and not 10,000 and it's unlikely you're gonna take 100,000 photos on the same shoot or on the same day. And that is so much easier. Now, another huge thing that I still don't understand, landscape versus vertical shooting. The colors change when you're flipping. And I thought it was just a white balance thing. It is so drastic that it doesn't make sense. The white balance shouldn't change from like warm to cool just because you're shooting for portrait to landscape. It happens on my A1, it happens on my A7S III and it throws me off every single time I'm shooting. Yes, I will edit the photo after and I can change my white balance. So this is a little bit confusing. Again, firmware update can probably fix that. Let me know what you guys think. Do you also have that experience with that landscape versus vertical shooting like change in color. Let's talk about camera bodies. What's happening with our camera bodies? Why do they look like they're 10 years old after just a year and a half? Yes, I do use my gear intensive manner, but honestly, I do pay attention to my gear. I put it in a nice bag, I, I, I clean it, etc. But somehow all my cameras lose paint at some point. And I think it has to do with the build which is I think a magnesium alloy body and then it's being painted on top versus a Canon camera. I feel like it's it's like a, a, a top plastic top thing that is like black. And so the plastic is black, so it's not gonna change color. You don't want a $7,000 camera or $6,000 camera to look like it's 10 years old after just a year. This camera that is like dozens of years old looks a lot better than my A1. If you have to resell your gear, 
then it also you're losing a lot of market value because people think your gear is super old but it's not and when it comes to ergonomics i think the grip is kind of good but it could be a little softer like a little more adhesive to the fingers sometimes not always honestly it's just a little hard and so i feel like the grip is not as strong as with certain materials that you can have now it changed on the zv1 so i don't know if they'll change it in the future but uh, let me know what you guys think also about the grip and the ergonomics flip screen i don't have a flip screen on my a1 this is I knew getting into it, but now uh, when I see the ASMR 5 flip screen, I'm like, oh man, you know, maybe I'll make a video about why I'm not switching to our ASMR 5 also, because I think it's another discussion, but there's something that I wish was improved was the back screen, right? Those monitors, they look good. The photos are okay, but I'm always disappointed when I look at the back of my camera. I have to look inside here to get like some interesting, like exciting review of a photo. When I look at the back of the screen, it doesn't look as good as when I import it and start playing with it in camera. But on my Canon, wow, in two seconds, I was like, oh, wow, why does this look so good at the back of the screen? So I don't know exactly what it is about. Maybe it's a screen technology. Maybe it's how it's being used. But Sony has like Xperia with the top, the best possible screens ever. So I want to see that technology come in here. That is kind of my experience with Sony. It's very personal. I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. Again, at the end of the day, a camera system will not change how you shoot. It will help you shoot maybe different way. But what happens in your brain is more important than what happens with your camera. So practice, 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 practice. Whether you practice with me through the 30 day to great photos or you practice on your own or you just watch the YouTube videos and then go shoot. Keep on practicing and tweak and improve those skills that are in your brain that allow you to take the photos that you love because this is how you take photos that you want to print and then that you are proud of. So until you feel that you're there in terms of your skills, don't even consider changing camera. But with that being said, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. I'll see you in the next one.